How good is your conversion rate? Well, there's actually two places that you can check how your conversion rate stacks up to your competitors. That's what we're gonna be walking through today. This video was actually prompted by a question from one of our YouTube subscribers. I was going over uh, a cost, all the factors that go into a cost, why your a cost is high and why you're struggling to bring it down. Uh, if you want that video, we'll link it in the description. Uh, but one of the comments said, Hey, I, I'm my conversion rate on this particular keyword is really low, despite me having a really optimized listing. So my listing is great. My product is great. Why do I have a poor conversion rate? Well, the thing is, there's a lot of sellers, unfortunately, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but if your conversion rate is low, that means that there's something that's wrong with your offer. Now, a lot of times this is your listing. So if your conversion rate is lower than your competition, then there's something in your listing or in your product that is not resonating with shoppers. Now, again, I've said that a big thing of that is your listing. So do you have all the information? Have you answered all shopper questions? Does your main image stack up? Uh, maybe you have A plus content, but how good is that A plus content? There's all kinds of factors here. There's also things like price points of course, that's going to play into your conversion rate. And unfortunately, also just the product. Do you have something that shoppers want? Okay. But the, the question is, okay, uh, I know that I need to have a competitive conversion rate, but how do I figure out what my conversion rate actually needs to be? What, what am I benchmarking against? So you might be looking at your listing and saying, Hey, I think this is, I, this looks fine to me. I think it's really competitive. I think it's better than my competition. I feel like my offer is solid. I feel like my price points are solid. I think everything is good, but still I'm struggling to make sales. Well, we don't want to ever look at something and say, Oh, I think it's good. I feel it's good. Uh, want to make sure that you're going in and you're analyzing data and making data-based decisions. And there are two things that is available free from Amazon. So if you have a seller account and you are brand registered, so you do need to be brand registered to take advantage of these things, but providing that you are and you do have a seller central account, uh, the brand metrics also works in vendor central as well, but providing you have that access, you can access these two analytic options. I'm gonna show you where they are, what they are, how to look at the data. So let's get into it. Now, the first one is called brand metrics. Brand metrics is located inside of the ad console. This is the one that vendors will also have access to. And so you're going to want to go into your ad console and then you're going to go to this little insights and planning section and you're going to click on brand metrics. When you do that, you're going to be presented with this screen and we want to go down into a specific category and then we're going to want to go to another analytics page. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. But first, let's talk about kind of like what data is contained in here. So this little blurred section right here is actually the brand. So this uh, data is going to apply to all products that are underneath that brand. So do keep that in mind. If you have several different products, you're not going to be able to look at how is this very specific product converting. Now I'm going to show you how we, we can use categories to sort of dig down into subsections and get a bit better of an idea on say maybe a particular product line. But do keep in mind, this is going to be an aggregate of your entire brand. Although if you have a couple different brands registered underneath your account, you can use this little drop down option to select the brand which you would want to analyze. And then the second thing that you can do, like I said, there are ways to drill down is to click on this change category. And this is going to bring up a long list. Now, depending on sort of how many categories and subcategories your particular products, again, all of the products underneath that brand are associated with, you may see more or less options here. And then what you can do is you can drill down into what you feel is the most relevant category for that particular product 
which you would like to analyze. So for this particular example, I chose paper and plastic. Now I would recommend going very specific here. What we found is that if I had chosen household supplies, which is a very general broad category, your competitors are going to be um, the people who are converting the highest in these categories have really, really high conversion rates because the competition is so stiff. So what we found is it's very common to have a lower than average conversion rate, like sort of the higher and the more broad the category that you choose. Now, if you go really, really deep into this, so like food storage bags, that might be really, really applicable to one of our products. Although there are certain subcategories where they don't even have average conversion rates because the data is just so limited. So do keep that in mind. I would recommend going in here, selecting a few categories and looking around and looking at the data that I'm going to go through next. So once you've figured out what relevant category you would like to drill down into, you're going to want to go and click this view detailed metrics for your brands in this category. And that is going to bring us to this screen right here, which is an overall breakdown. I remember I said, we're using these data points to compare our conversion rate to our competitors. How do we stack up? We feel like we have a good offer, but do we really? And that's what this data is going to tell you. So you're going to see here this overall category metrics. This is the metric that is the most interesting. So here we have our conversion rate, and it actually gives you an idea of if you're going up, if you're going down, what that looks like. And the category median, which this is the average conversion rate for all products and brands that are in this particular category. It takes the average out of all of those and says, this is what that is. So if you hover over here, it's the performance of the 50th percentile of brands in the selected category. So you can see why the selected category is so important because the more relevant, the more specific, the more like products you're going to be benchmarking yourself against. And then what we would like to see here is that our conversion rate is at least on par with the average with the 50th percentile in our category. Like I said, this is a little bit of a broad category, so paper and plastic, the products that are going to be uh, underneath this category, there's a lot of competitors to go after. And then we have to benchmark ourselves against. So the competition is going to be much more stiff, which means it's more likely that our conversion rate may or may not step up unless we're like a top category leader. Now, the other thing to know about this is you can select a specific date range. So you can see the last available month, which in this case is going to be March because we're in April, although we're already into the 18th of April. So we're going to have to wait well until after April. Now, what you can do is select the last available week, which is going to change the data set here. And we can see that, you know, these numbers change as well. So you can look at, again, a couple of different date ranges, play around. And again, how am I stacking up against my category? averages. So this one, like I said, this is going to be an aggregate of your entire brand. And it's also just going to look at the average category. But what if you wanted to dive into things on a per search term level? Well, that's what we're going to be going over next when we get into the search query performance report. All right. So we are going to be going into seller central here. Unfortunately, if you are a vendor account, you're not going to have access to search query reports. So use that past method with the brand metrics. However, if you are, of course, brand registered and you have a seller central account, uh, you can go in here and you're going to go to brands and you're going to select brand analytics. Now this screen is always kind of changing right now. This is what the first screen looks like. So you're going to want to pop open these drop downs. And what we're looking for is the search query performance report. So you're going to select that and then you're going to be taken to this particular screen. Now, how do we read this? What does this tell us? And how can we use it to analyze our conversion rates? So there's two ways you can break down the data. One is brand view, which this means, again, it's going to be an aggregate view of all of your products that are underneath that specific 
brand. So if you have, again, several brands, you can see I've blurred out the brand here. You can select from the drop down and select like what specific brand you would like to drill down into. You also can select the reporting range. So do we want this a weekly report? So do we want to look at weeks? Do we want to look at months? Do we want to look at it quarterly? Um, do we want to select a specific week? And of course, if I change this to monthly or quarterly, we would be prompted to select the um, whatever week or quarter or month we would like to drill down into. By default, it's going to be the most recent, okay? And the second way that you can drill down into things is through this ASIN view. So what this ASIN view does is it allows you to search or type in a specific child ASIN and then run this same data analytics for that one singular ASIN. So that's really helpful. We can look at an aggregate of the brand if we want to get a general overall idea, or we can drill down into one of our specific ASINs. Now, if you have a lot of variations associated with your product, I recommend going with the ASIN out of all of the variations, it's going to have the most traffic to it or probably the best seller. You basically just want the thing that has the most data associated with it. And again, as before, we can select the same either weekly, monthly, quarterly reporting. And then if you selected one of these, it's also going to appear an option of like, hey, what weeks would you like to analyze? So let's go back to this aggregate brand view and then let's break down the data points that you can use to, again, get your conversion rate versus competitors. So if we scrolled down here, again, either this is the same view, either it's going to be aggregated like the brand, like what we're seeing here, or if you selected a specific child ASIN, you would see this exact same view, but the data is going to be for that specific ASIN. And so over here, again, you can see I've blurred it out, but you're going to have a list of search queries. These are specific shopper search. Amazon refers to them as search queries. You can think of a search query like a search term inside of your ad console. So it's going to break down the data points for every specific search query. Now, I do want to say there's a lot of confusion around search query reports and the data that is contained within them because oftentimes when people go through and they analyze their order volumes, which we are going to do to help determine sort of what our conversion rate looks like here. When they look at their order volumes and they look at it for a specific date range, they'll say, hey, wait a minute, it's telling me that I have really low order volumes here. However, um, I know if I go and I look at my advertising and I look at that exact search term, I have way more sales than that through that search term. Like what gives? Yes. Da a search query performance report is not going to contain all of the total sum of sales data that happens on Amazon. There's a couple of different reasons for that. One is this data only contains information that is from the search page grid. So when you go into Amazon and you type a specific search into the search bar, let's go to amazon.com right now. If I typed in baby blanket and I looked at this specific search. So if I click onto the sponsored brand ad, that's not going to be included in the clicks. If I go down and I find a widget, so here you can see like the trending now widgets or a sponsored brand video ad, all of these widgets and sections that they put within the search grid are not counted in this report. If I have like a sidebar here, or if I go through and I click through this product, but maybe I see a product that I really like that's being advertised on this particular search page. So here, maybe I see one of these blankets and I click it, or I see one of these blankets and I click it, and then I go on to purchase. Well, that is not going to be recorded as orders within search query, which I, we know if you go into advertising, that is going to be recorded. The other reason is that with the um, with your ads or also within your um, business reports, if you get an order, say, two days after the click, right, seven days after the click for sponsored products, 14 days after the click for sponsored brands and sponsored display ads, those ads are going to be recorded. So they're going to show up in your business reports, right? or they're gonna show up inside of your advertising console as a sale. But if I clicked through to this particular product today, and then I came back say two days later, and then I actually purchased this 
item, well, search query report is not going to record this sale as associated with that click because it's a 24 hour window that they're sort of screenshotting off of. So for that reason, that's why if you're looking at business reports, or if you're looking inside of your ads and your ad data, and you're trying to compare that to search query performance reports, a lot of people get really screwed up and they think, oh, search query report is wrong. It's not wrong. Whenever a report doesn't quite line up, it's not because it's wrong. You have to go back and look at the documentation and sort of figure out how are things calculated within this report? And then that will lead you to sort of understand the data points and how you can use them. All right, so now that we understand how the search query report works, why the orders might be a little bit different, let's talk about how you can use this to analyze your conversion rates. So when search query report came out, everybody's minds got absolutely blown because for the first time we were seeing analytics on an individual shopper search level, which we could always do through the ad console, right? We could go in and we could look at a specific search term and identify how our products were converting there, which is really, really helpful. But this data is going to be the aggregate. So the overall conversion rates for each individual shopper search. So this is going to include organic search as well well as your ad searches and clicks. Again, providing they're in the search grid and they don't apply to say like a sponsored brand or sponsored display ad. Now, again, we kind of went over how this data is somewhat limited and why you might see like maybe a little bit lower conversion rates or not the order volume that you are expected. But that being said, it is a really powerful analysis to do because not only does it include your metrics, it also includes the metrics of the averages for other brands in this search. Fabulous. Okay. How do we analyze it? So you're going to have to calculate conversion rate. Now, how do you calculate conversion rate? So if you know the calculation of conversion rate, it is the amount of orders you generated divided by how many clicks you got. So we can do that in this report because it does give us these two data points. Again, do keep in mind the nuances of how this data is reported. So we can look here and we can see the brand count. So you can see this is under the clicks. So this is how many clicks our brand got, again, through this one specific search query, which you could see on this row. And then you can look at the total count. So how many cumulative clicks happened overall? And then what we can do is we can scroll over here and look at purchases. So this is again, the number of purchases for our brand count, and then you can see the total count. So what you would do if you wanted to calculate again, your average conversion rate with all the nuances of how the status is calculated, you would take 273 and we want to divide it by the brand count, which is 3,487. And again, this number may be a little bit lower than you were expecting for all the reasons I just shared and how the order volumes are done, but you still might be getting clicks. But again, maybe not all of those orders are counted. However, when you're comparing apples to apples, which in this case is uh, taking this um, total count and then dividing it by or taking the total count of purchases here, and then we're going to divide it by the total count of clicks here, that's going to give us, again, averages using sort of the same data and the same data information. So whenever you're trying to like combine com reports from different sources, sometimes again, you end up with those discrepancies versus like how the data is actually reported and calculated. But whenever you're inside of the same report, comparing apples to apples from the same exact data source, you can be much more confident in those comparisons. So for example, again, this is for the overall aggregate of the brand. If I wanted to evaluate a single ASIN, I would go over to ASIN do view. I would do the same analysis here and I would say, okay, this is an important search query for me. And then I would just go through and you can generate a download. So I would download this. I would put it in a spreadsheet. I would run that calculation across all of the search queries and then say, hey, what is the average conversion rates compared to my conversion rates on an individual shopper query? And then where am I converting better than the averages? Where do I have a competitive advantage? Look at those searches, identify, are there any any like root words? Are there any descriptions of like the, you know, is it like 
girl blanket for baby or something and you're seeing girl and feminine and all of those things or maybe you're seeing a bunch of like gender neutral keywords oh it's obvious i appear to that data set and then also look at where am i falling behind are there specific keywords that are really important to my products that i'm really not stacking up in terms of the competition and my conversion rates and how can i maybe appeal to those audiences or is that even my audience at all maybe you identify a better subsection for a very specific audience that converts very well. And then that might be something that you would want to then go into your listing and say, I know that this is my audience. How can I better speak to those shoppers? So again, that was the two ways that you can benchmark your conversion rates against your competitors using brand metrics inside of the ad console or this search query performance report. And as always, whenever you are looking at something, whenever you're looking at your product, don't say, I think, I feel, I hope. You always want to base it on data. So to do that, use these two options to level up your game and make more sales.